The service for Ash Wednesday leads us into the season of Lent, a season marked by bare walls and windows, a stripping away the non-essential and the unimportant by listening in quietness to the groaning of all creation, by reflecting on our own sinfulness and on God's gift of forgiveness, which comes through God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Today, in light of the storm, we are returning to a simplified online worship. We will experience a powerful act of confession, greatly expanded over our usual briefer confessions. We will hear Psalm 51, a reminder that we need to be renewed every day. During this season, we stand before God with contrite hearts, knowing our weaknesses and our failings, and yet reminded that despite these failings, these weaknesses, we are not alone. For Jesus sent the Holy Spirit for true repentance and renewal. Because we cannot be together today, God and weather permitting, we will offer an in-person time to receive ashes on this Sunday, February 26th, the first Sunday in Lent. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you reject nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who seek forgiveness. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I share a reading with you today from Isaiah chapter 58. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me, and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all of your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, 
the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of our streets to live in. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. 
Let us now sing the Lenten Gospel Acclamation. According to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moss and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But instead, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Greetings and grace and peace to you from our loving God in heaven. Amen. When I was in middle school, there was one girl in my class that, to be honest, I did not like. It wasn't because she was mean or rude or, or anything like that. In fact, it was the opposite. She was one of the popular girls. She was beautiful, she was always cheery, she had a smile on her face. The teacher's pet, a heart of gold. Everyone except me seemed to love her. She was one of those people in life who just seemed to have everything all put together. And compared to her seemingly perfect life, my own imperfect one, felt like a mess. Of course, I know now that this girl was not perfect. She, like all of us, had her own challenges and insecurities. I just couldn't see them at the time because she did not want to let them show. Now that I am older, I have more empathy for this girl. Being the popular one who everyone loved I admired and admired probably came with a lot of pressure. I imagine that she had an image to maintain and a status to uphold, 
expectations of, from others. And as I look back now, I wonder how often she may have been wearing a mask, going about her daily life pretending she had it all together. That's a pretty hard life to live. But I think that we can all fall into the trap of having it all together. In our society, if someone asks you how you are doing, the polite answer is to say, I'm good, life is going just fine. Oftentimes, we are taught to hide our hurts and our problems. We don't want to be a burden to others, and we worry, what would they really think if they knew what was going on with us underneath the surface? If you're lucky, you hopefully have some people in your life to whom you can be your true self. But I think in general, as we interact with others in our daily lives, we often try to put on an image, a show of who we want them to see. I know I myself have found myself doing this, putting on that act of, I'm great, even when I'm not. I don't always want other people to see. In some ways, I think it is possible that the Israelites in our readings today fell into the similar lie of having it all together. In our readings from both Isaiah and Matthew, we see people who are putting on an act. They're showing off their faith to show a sense of righteousness. They want to show God and the world that they have it all together. The people of Israel would call upon the name of the Lord and pray for God's righteousness, yet they struggled to live according to God's ways. Rather than focusing on their relationship with God, they were often focused on their own self. They wanted others to admire them, to see how well they were doing, or to see how faithful they were. They wanted to show that they had it, all that they needed on their own. So they did things like pray out loud in extravagance, or make a show of giving their offerings out of their abundance. It seems like they were trying to impress God and others, glorifying God for their blessings while blindly ignoring, or maybe even reveling a little bit in the suffering of others. Look at how much better I'm doing compared to that person over there. In their show of having it all together, they were forgetting to see their need for God and the needs of their neighbors. I think the sin of the Israelites in our readings today, and often ours too, is becoming so wrapped up in ourselves, trying to prove to ourselves and to the world that we are self-sufficient, we're successful, we're independent, we're faithful, we're smart, or whatever else it is that we value. We get busy trying to live our own lives, fulfilling our own needs, and trying to maintain the image of ourselves that we want others to see. But of course, the price to that, when we spend so much time and energy focused inward on ourselves, we fail to see the needs of those around us. And possibly worse, we may even trick ourselves into believing that we really are doing just fine failing to recognize our need for God. The truth is for us today that we were not created to be perfect, nor were we created to do everything on our own. We were created to be genuine, created to see and be seen, to know and be known. Even with our imperfections, we were made as part of God's beautiful creation, to be community made all the more beautiful when we see, appreciate, and care for one another. We were created to share our hurts and our challenges, created to recognize our need for God and to rely on God in our daily lives. So during this season of Lent, may we learn to live authentically and not perfectly. May we take off the masks that we may carry 
and allow ourselves to be seen, even the parts that we like to keep hidden. During this season, may we recognize our own brokenness and our need for God's grace, while also knowing that we are still God's beloved regardless. May we learn to see the needs of the neighbor and may God encourage us to step outside of ourselves. During this season, may we know all the more what it means to love and to be loved in relationship with God and with one another. We need God and we need each other. During this season of Lent, may we be renewed in our faith and trust in God's promises. May we give thanks to God for God's grace in this season, trusting that God loves our genuine and authentic selves, as imperfect as we may be. We have no need to be perfect, just genuine, and trusting in God's guidance. Thanks be to God. Amen. confess our sins with the prayer of confession. For self-centered living and for failing to walk with humility and gentleness, holy God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For longing to have what is not ours and for hearts that are not at rest with ourselves, holy God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For misuse of human relationships and for unwillingness to see the image of God in others, holy God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. For jealousies that divide families and nations and for rivalries that create strife and warfare, holy God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God, and for carelessness with the fruits of creation, holy God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. For hurtful words that condemn, and for angry deeds that harm, holy God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For idleness in witnessing to Jesus Christ, and for squandering the gifts of love and grace, holy God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Through the Holy Spirit, God cleanses us and gives us the power to proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. 
And so as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we uh, would normally take an offering, and if you would like, you can do so online or send it to the church. Thank you. giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. Go in grace, grow in faith, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.